Hi, and welcome to WOW Talk. My name is Donna Capacity. And my name is Darlene Gustin. And today we are going to be talking about... I can't remember what we're calling it. (laughs) (laughs) I know, we threw a few titles out there. Yes. Preparing for a healthy pregnancy. There you go, preparing for a healthy pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So take it away, Dr. Gustin. Thank you. So there's a lot of younger patients coming in now um, wanting naturopathic care before, during, and after a pregnancy. And I love when people are aware enough to come in before they even conceive. And that's really where naturopathic medicine can help you a lot. And um, the, the main theme of why would you come in before would be for detoxification. And so you'd want to come in at least three months before conceiving the baby because you want to have enough time to catch up with with nutritional deficiencies, detoxify whatever is in your body, and also prepare the right hormonal balance in the body so that the baby has a clean, nourished, balanced mom uh, because that will be their home for the next nine months. That is brilliant. I would never have thought of that, preparing for conception. Right. You know, it's one thing because I remember reading the books on um, fertility and what to expect when you're pregnant, but I never really thought about preparing the body as the home for my unborn baby. Exactly, exactly. So once you're pregnant, there are restrictions to what you can do. You can't just freely take any vitamin at any dose. You can't do detoxing. Some of the equipment that naturopaths use, like my body composition machine, it's recommended that you not do this on pregnant women. So so once you're pregnant, some things are no longer allowed until after you finish nursing. So, so to assess your own health, especially for the things that you don't feel. So, so some of the things I'm talking about, I would, I would only know because I tested your hair that you're full of aluminum. Or if I tested your blood that you have a candida overgrowth. Or I tested your nutrition and found deficiencies of calcium or, or B vitamins. So, so a lot of these things you can um, test for and you wouldn't necessarily have the symptoms. So I think it's really valuable to share with our audience that you never know how you're, you will look unless you actually test. Okay then, so you're suggesting minimum three months before. So you and your partner have decided you want to conceive. So it would be great to then right away perhaps come in and see you because you're saying three month minimum. So I mean, even would would four months before, five months, or doesn't really matter, just at least be three months before. So could you walk us through this? Mm-hmm. Somebody comes in, they're thinking about conceiving because I I still love this idea. It's so novel to me to think, okay, let's get prepared. So let's say I've come into your office and I going to ask you what I should do. Right. So the first thing that I would do is send your hair to the lab for a hair mineral analysis. And it's a test I do on every patient regardless. And the reason for that is that half of the tests are coming back with toxic amounts of heavy metals. And two of the more popular heavy metals that I'm finding in my patients, number one is aluminum. And aluminum, the studies on aluminum have been connecting it to Alzheimer's. And aluminum is classified as a neurotoxin. So it's a a substance that is toxic to the nervous system. And then another very popular one is mercury. So another neurotoxin. And there are studies that are underway that are trying to understand, is mercury one of the possible causes of autism? And the autism rates are increasing dramatically. So, so if we want to reduce risk factors, step one is clean the body. So, so 50% chance of heavy metal toxicity on a hair mineral analysis. But the other part that the test assesses is your nutritional status of your minerals. So once you're pregnant, In the first three months, the baby's still super tiny. So there aren't any dramatic changes to the nutritional needs of you or the baby. 
So the nutritional needs become more elevated in the second and third trimester. Do you have enough calcium? Do you have enough protein? Do you have enough magnesium? Do you, do you have enough zinc? So, so zinc is one of the nutrients that is very important for fertility and it affects fertility many different ways. So it, it affects the function of the ovaries. Are you ovulating? It's an antioxidant, which is kind of like, are you rusting younger than you should? Yeah. It's kind of my favorite way of, of describing that. But also, let's not assume it's just the mom. I'm also thinking about the dad. Um, so, so the mom is the nutritional home of the baby, but... Um, the dad in the picture too, male fertility is also very affected by zinc. So sperm count is decreasing quickly in the last couple of decades and um, sperm quality. So, so zinc deficiency is one of the reasons for some of those um, preconception mom or dad things that I look for in testing uh, the mom and the dad. Do you have enough zinc? And that is a, a mineral that helps you get pregnant, stay pregnant. Okay, so you're testing the hair. Yep. How long does that take to get back to get those results? And then you're testing the zinc. How do you test zinc again? I know we've talked about it before, but maybe you can refresh. Sure, our minds. sure. There's a few different ways. So, so there are signs uh, I can tell on the body physically. Um, if you're very deficient in zinc, you might have white spots on the nails. Your skin tone might look a little bit yellow. And um, there's a zinc taste test that if you can't taste zinc sulfate that reflects that the patient is deficient in zinc and it's also on the hair mineral analysis so depending how much of a rush i will do one or two of those ways um, of evaluating a patient and so first the hair is not allowed to be recently colored to to be acceptable to the lab so there might be a little bit of waiting there wait till your hair color grows out so i can send in your roots yes and then it takes a couple weeks for the findings to come back from the lab. And then I don't know how much aluminum I'm going to find. Is it the one-month cleanse or the six-month cleanse? So oh. it would be very silent. And, and that's why it's hard to say, how soon should you come? And the answer back to that is, how toxic are you? And it's not just heavy metals I'm talking about, right? Yeah. There, there's other, other versions of toxicity. Some people are acidic. Some people need a more general liver cleanse, which is to remove stuck chemicals out of the body. Some people need a parasite cleanse, which has to do with disinfecting the body of silent infections to improve the microbiome. So, so when I say cleanse, it's in my brain, I'm thinking which toxin in which body part. But when patients talk to me about a cleanse, they have been to a health food store and it's usually fiber or liver or something, but it's so much more than that. Sure. Okay. And what are the other factors then that you would consider? Let's say we've done the cleanse. Now what's next? Actually, let me add something okay. that is really huge for me. There's um, every once in a while, a study comes along that really changes me. And I heard about a study a few years ago. It's called the lung study. You can Google it. And it was over 6,000 people in the study, patients, with the top 10 world researchers over, I think, a 20-year period. It was huge. And this lung study was obviously all about lung health. But the findings of this study are profound and apply to all of us. So when I talk about conceive in a healthy, clean body. Listen to this. In the lung study, they determined that if you clean your home one time a week using national brand products, so your window spray, your toilet cleaner, your dishwasher soap, your floor cleaner, I, I'm not going to go name on. the company no. names, but you guys know what they sell in the grocery store, right? Those products, they are toxic enough that cleaning your home once with the usual stuff is the toxic equivalent to smoking one pack of cigarettes per day. Wow, that just gave me chills and that is profound. That's huge. My goodness. 
So this particular study was counting how many patients had asthma and bronchitis and lung health, but that doesn't mean that those toxins are only going to affect the lungs, but that's how toxic our typical lifestyle has become in North America. So one of the biggest things, the takeaway of this podcast is green up at at home. Like, what are you using on your body? Like, like especially things that touch your skin. If you can't eat it, you shouldn't rub it on your skin either. Another thing I've never thought about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because everything, well, I must say everything, but every, most of the things in my life and that I put on my skin, I wouldn't want to eat. I exactly. couldn't eat. Exactly. They're not edible. And and I can't blame any one particular product. Like I personally do not use dryer sheets. I do not have plug-in candles and scented air spray for I I don't use that stuff because I know more than I want to know about how bad that stuff is yes I use essential oils I I'm very green at home and um but after that study I became I went from excellent to perfect right okay with with my product choices but that's one of the biggest things like I mean most people know oh gosh you know if if you're a smoker I I'm gonna stop smoking because I think I want to be pregnant next year I'm gonna stop drinking I'm gonna stop whatever it's like oh no it's gonna take a lot more than that okay Mm -hmm. really good to know yeah and you can't blame any one particular item you can't say it's my scented hairspray that made me so toxic it's more like a little sniff bite or lick of this or that food or or topical or inhaled product a little bit from a thousand places and in the naturopathic profession we call it total toxic burden the a little bit from everywhere Yes. Right. Yes. It adds yeah. up. What do we say? It all adds up. Okay. Wow. All right. So good step in there. So green up at home. Then what about nutrition? So nutritionally, the the one at the top of the list is the prevention of spina bifida with um, taking the B vitamins. Um, and also they need to be started three months in advance of conception. And the older we get, the more often I see that deficiency in, in older moms. Yes. Um, if you blindly take these vitamins, they wouldn't hurt you. If, if now you can overdose on a vitamin too. Yes. I, I've had patients who were just too eager and their medical doctor checks their blood and their B12 is, is excessive. So okay. it, with this particular vitamin, you just stop for a while and it'll come back down, but, but you can also cause harm. And, um, and when you look at the recommended daily allowance of a nutrient for how much of this vitamin should I have while pregnant. Sometimes I'll exceed that number when I'm treating somebody because I know that their starting point is so far below um, that their deficiency is so big. And so we kind of have to take everything with a grain of salt and say, yeah, that's what it might say on the internet, but they don't know how deficient you are. So, So I'll kind of negotiate where that dose should be with the patient and sometimes we go a little faster but the minute someone conceives even let's say if I'm trying to catch up their deficient status preconception and then I'll say but the minute you attempt to conceive at your next ovulation you're dropping the dose right yes so so I, I I'm always safe with my doses and then how about food same like with the live green concept is is having um, really clean food. So there's what's called the dirty dozen, which which top 12 foods are most toxic as far as pesticides and things like that. And depending on which food it is, sometimes you can wash the pesticides off. Sometimes you can peel them off. Sometimes they're right through the flesh of the fruit or vegetables. So it depends what you eat. So so I would Google that up a little bit for yourself and say you're a banana eater, you're an apple eater, look up Dirty Dozen and eat cleaner foods. So buying them in season, tree ripened, organic, but careful with organic. Yes. There's... um. There's actually a story I'm going to throw in. Okay. Today, today's my day of throw in the extra stories. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I'm in the mood to talk today. So I have a friend who is a, a toxicologist. Mm-hmm. So I had a conversation with her years ago. And I said to her, 
this is when the grocery stores were just starting to put organic food in the grocery store. So for me, that was very exciting to see this happen, that you didn't have to do a separate trip to a health food store to buy an organic apple. So it was probably like February and I wanted to buy apples. So I went to the grocery store and I'm looking at the apples that were obviously sprayed. They were these beautiful, red, shiny, sexy, red, delicious apples, okay? Yes. Yes. And I thought, yum, yeah, that, that would taste good, but I'm a naturopath, I know they spray those. And then I go, look, they've got organic apples. So I walk over to the organic apples and I'm looking at them and they look like dried up wrinkly like a really old person wrinkly <laughs> and 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 the little stems on these apples they were starting to go fuzzy because there's mold happening and I thought well nice that that apple's organic but but then I'm eating this half dead moldy apple and I thought I know who to ask I'm gonna ask my friend Elka who I'm going to forward this podcast to later. And I wonder if she remembers this conversation. I go, which apple is worse for me? And she said, hands down, the organic apple is far more toxic than the sprayed apple. So food for thought and, and, and definitely to bring in the word balance, that you can't be a perfect health nut, 100% loyal to your local health food store who's selling you the moldy apples and, um, and the turnover is not sufficient and you're starting to get bacteria and then the food is decomposing. Like, pick your toxin. Sure, that makes and, sense. And why why do you need to eat an apple in February, right? So part of the problem is that we've become spoiled as North Americans that I can have strawberries year round and, and I don't care how far they had to drive on an airplane for me to eat them. And that's really quite unnatural, right, to our body. Yeah, We eat apples sense. in September, October. We live in right. Ontario. That's right. right. We and can... our strawberries, which strawberry season is coming very soon, my favorite fruit in the world, Ontario local strawberries. Yum. And it's coming soon. We're getting there. <laughs> yes. Now, yeah. strawberries are usually on the dirty dozen list. Oh, no. So for strawberry lovers, beware. The organic ones are really worth it. So so budget-wise, also, you can... You can pick and choose where your budget will go, that it will make a stronger health benefit in certain parts of your grocery bill. And so with the strawberries too, is be careful with strawberries and when they're ready and organic, buy them, eat them, freeze them, and we make strawberry freezer jam with them every June. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd like a jar this year. Okay. All right. Okay. Sign me up. Okay. So do you have any other tips for having a healthy pregnancy? Well, for today, we're focusing on before you even get pregnant. Exactly. Right? And you want to be in your healthiest state, whether it's body composition. So, so I just basically do a tune-up, like a prevention appointment and say, what if you have a pre-existing condition or if you have symptoms, they will come to the top of my list. And then I do a lot of patient education about where you're at in the world of let's talk about the things that you should test because you don't feel what I'm talking about. And for the patient to take responsibility for eating cleaner and reducing exposure to toxins around in their lifestyle so so that's the big thing um preconception Pre, yes but i i change the plan with each trimester and so in the first trimester um i look for certain things like i find a lot of people in first trimester their adrenal glands go into overdrive those are their stress glands because of the pregnancy so so it might take a little more napping in the first trimester okay. to kind of have the adrenal glands not stressed out. But may I interrupt you there to ask you, but would that be something you may recommend to do in the pre-stage, the pre-pregnancy? Of course. Start your napping, maybe yes. uh, you start to get more sleep, that Definitely. sort of thing. So then you kind of are in the habit 
Definitely. going into it, right? Definitely. So that's something. Okay. Definitely. So so in my treatment plan, I have a three-step process. I, I try to keep things very simple. So it would be step one, let's talk about get rid of everything that's dragging down your health. That's step one. That's the all the detoxing stuff we sure. talked about. Step two, put back what's missing. So that has to do mostly with nutrition and deficiencies or lifestyle choices like how much exercise and sleep you get. And step three is repairing the organs. So if I find that the wannabe mom is in a state of adrenal fatigue, she's burned out, or her thyroid's low, or her immune system. So so we go through those three steps, preconception, and um, and just normalize and strengthen in all three ways. Okay, then. Yeah, and then after that, with each trimester, the theme is different. So in second trimester, it's more about nutrition. So so the um, baby is growing, and we, we adjust nutrition. And then with third trimester, it's a lot about structure, how your spine is dealing with the growing belly and how your hips are doing, maybe include some chiropractic care at that point because your center of gravity gets shifted. Mm -hmm. And then we start preparing for an awesome birth. Sure. And then after that, we make sure that the mom is eating well for breastfeeding if she's doing that. And, um, And pregnancy ends when breastfeeding ends. Yes. And so we will go in more depth. We will explore the actual pregnancy, mm-hmm. I think, in our next episodes. Definitely. We'll look at them more each, um, yeah, each trimester. Wonderful. Yeah. And uh, so that's great. So I think that you've given our listeners a really good map of how to prepare and how to have a, a healthy a pre-pregnancy health. I awesome. That's great. So Definitely. thank you very much. If you have any questions, please send them in. Please send us your comments. And Dr. Gustin would be so happy to answer your questions. Absolutely. And we thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.